Today I've got a nice crazy looking integral from our favorite integral suggester. So what we want to do here is take the integral from alpha to beta of the cosine of x minus 1 over x dx. So this function is a little bit complicated itself, but the really interesting thing here is that the bounds of integration are also fairly complicated. So alpha is defined to be 1 over 6 times the square root of 36 plus pi squared minus pi, and then beta is kind of complementary to that. It's 1 over 6 times the square root of 36 plus pi squared plus pi. And of course, these are not like well-known constants alpha and beta. These are just definitions of alpha and beta for this problem to simplify the notation moving forward. Before we get started on this integration, I'll first like calculate some arithmetic properties of alpha and beta. The first of which is one over alpha equals beta. So in other words, alpha and beta are multiplicative inverses. But maybe before we even do that, let's notice that beta minus alpha is pi over three. And I won't even do that kind of by hand because we can really just see that. Notice beta minus alpha will cancel this square root stuff and leave us with pi minus negative pi. So that's two pi over six, which is pi over three. So we're good to go on this one down here. Let's maybe put a check mark. Now let's move on to this, one over alpha equals beta. And we'll do this just by calculating alpha times beta. And hopefully we'll get the number one, which will imply this. So notice that alpha times beta will be one over 36. And then we'll have the square root of 36 plus pi squared minus pi times the square root of 36 plus pi squared plus pi. So I use the commutative rule of multiplication to move those one over six to the front. But now let's notice that we've got a difference of squares situation here. If you think about this as like a minus b, and this is like a plus b, if we multiply those out, we get a squared minus b squared. So let's see what that leaves us with. That'll leave us with one over 36, and then we'll have a squared, which is 36 plus pi squared, minus b squared, which is pi squared. So in the end, we have 36 over 36, which is very clearly one. But if we know that alpha times beta is equal to one, then very clearly we have alpha equals one over beta. And kind of in concert with this, we have beta equals one over alpha, or maybe symmetrically to this. So these are multiplicative inverses of each other. Okay, so now that we've got these arithmetic properties out of the way, let's maybe move on to our integral. Hey everyone out there in YouTube land, just wanted to take a minute to plug the Patreon. Patreon is a great way for viewers like you to get more involved in the community and earn awesome rewards, like live access to the Patreon seminar series, exclusive Discord perks, and early access to some videos. I'm really psyched about the power of this community to enact change for the betterment of math education, and we're well on our way to achieving our $1,000 per month goal. Thanks for all your support, and now back to the video. So the first thing that we'll do is make a substitution. And maybe the most obvious substitution would be u equals x minus 1 over x. But that's not going to be the substitution we start with. Because in fact, that won't take us down the right path. What we'll do instead is let u equal 1 over x. So let's do that. So if u equals 1 over x, that's the same thing as that saying that x is 1 over u, which means dx is equal to minus du over u squared, just using maybe the power rule, the general power rule there. Okay, but then notice when x is equal to alpha, then we see that u is equal to one over alpha, which we already showed was equal to beta. And then when x is equal to beta, that means that u is equal to one over beta, which is equal to alpha. Again, from the symmetric properties that we have over here. Okay, so now that we've got this taken care of, we can totally exchange our x integral for our u integral. And now this will be the integral from beta to alpha now because we're in the u world 
of, let's see, the cosine of one over u minus u, because we're replacing x with one over u and then one over x with u. And then we've got du, which is, and then we've got dx, I should say, which is a minus sign. Let's bring that out. And then we have du over u squared. Okay, good. And now let's use some properties here. So we know that we can exchange this minus for a plus if we switch the order of integration. So that's gonna be alpha to beta. And then furthermore, we know that cosine is an even function. Since cosine is an even function, we can replace this one minus one over u minus u with u minus one over u. Okay, so that's gonna leave us with something like this. We have the integral from alpha to beta of and actually, I'm gonna do one more switch while we're at it. I'm gonna take all the u's here and replace them back with x's. So that's just doing a trivial substitution. So I'm kind of piggybacking this trivial substitution on the top of this substitution that did our change of bounds and our change of dx. Okay, so that's gonna give us a one over x squared from this one over u squared. And then we'll have the cosine of, let's see, x minus one over x dx. So we've got something like that. So we have our original integral is equal to this integral right here where we have the same function multiplied by one over x squared. And that's actually gonna be really useful for our next step, which we'll start now. So in the last board, we showed that our integral right here was the same thing as the same integral with an included one over x squared there. And now we're gonna use that to really finish off our calculation. So let's notice that this integral is equal to one half of it plus itself. And so that would be the integral from alpha to beta of cosine of x minus one over x dx plus the same integral. But I'll use that equality that we proved on the last board. So that'll be the integral from alpha to beta of one over x squared times the cosine of x minus one over x dx. Great. So this really just amounts to the fact that the number one is equal to half times two, given the fact that those two have the same value from what we just showed. Okay, so now we can write this as one half, and then we'll have the integral from alpha up to beta of one plus one over x squared times the cosine of x minus one over x dx. So that's just smashing those two integrals together. And now we're gonna do a last substitution which will finish this whole thing off. What's the substitution we'll do now? Well, let's notice that the derivative of what's inside the cosine function here is exactly what's going on outside here. And that motivates us to take this equal to our substituted variable. I'll use theta here. So let's notice that theta is, if we let theta equal to equal x minus one over x, that means d theta is equal to, let's see, one plus one over x squared dx using derivative rules. So that replaces this bit right here with theta. And then here, our kind of earmuffs make our d theta. Okay, good. Now let's see what happens to our bounds of integration. So when x equals, let's see, alpha, we have theta is equal to alpha minus one over alpha, but we showed that one over alpha was beta, so we have alpha minus beta, which is minus pi over three. So that happens when x is alpha. When x is equal to beta, that means that theta is equal to beta minus one over beta, which was alpha, so that's pi over three. So that gives us this nice symmetric region of integration from pi over three to minus pi over three. Okay, so in the end, we can write this as one half, and then we have the integral from minus pi over three to pi over three of, the cosine of theta d theta, when all is said and done. But now we use, again, the fact that the cosine is an even function and we're integrating over a symmetric region of integration 
2 instead of integrate from minus pi over 3 to pi over 3 will integrate from 0 to pi over 3 by multiplying this thing by 2 which cancels the half out. So again we can have a nice simplification there and now we can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus that gives us the sine of theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 3. The sine of pi over 3 is in fact the square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 0 is 0. So our final answer here is the square root of 3 over 2. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.